And so, at 9.45, all airborne planes were forced to land. This order applied to all civilian aircraft. Certain military planes were allowed to remain airborne. By 12.16 that afternoon, the FAA managed to ground over 4,000 planes without incident. Uh, during the time that the airplane coming in to the Pentagon, uh, there was a young man who would come in and say to the vice president, the, the plane is 50 miles out, the plane is 30 miles out. And when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, uh, the young man also said to the vice president, do the orders still stand? And uh, the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? Arlington, Virginia. American Airlines Flight 77 allegedly crashes into the ground floor of the Pentagon. Pentagon authorities will deny that the building had anti-aircraft defense. The FBI arrives within minutes and the site is declared a federal crime scene becoming their exclusive responsibility. With the help of civilians, they comb the Pentagon lawn for debris and within 24 hours, they had confiscated every known video of the attack. Pentagon officials initially denied that any of their cameras captured the event. However, on March 7, 2002, five images taken by a security camera from across the heliport are released. For years, these five frames were the only public footage of the Pentagon attack. This would change on October 14, 2004, when Scott Bingham would file a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit requesting videotapes that captured the impact of Flight 77. Special Agent Jacqueline McGuire of the FBI located a CD-ROM that contains copies of two time-lapse recordings made by security cameras, released on March 16, 2006. A video taken from a Sitco gas station, which is open only to Pentagon employees, released on September 15, 2006. And the Doubletree Hotel in Arlington, Virginia, released on December 7, 2006. Agent McGuire concluded that the FBI possessed 85 videotapes that might be potentially responsive. As of this date, we have no clear images of what happened at the Pentagon on the morning of 9-11. The official story goes as such. American Airlines Flight 77 was taken over by five hijackers, led by Hani Hanjour. Hanjour entered the United States in 1996 to become a professional airline pilot. He would not complete a single course. kind of a waste of time. He wouldn't show up for uh, flights on time, didn't do his homework. Average or below average piloting skills. Mm -hmm. English was very poor, uneventful from our perspective. Yeah. The 9 11 Commission concludes that Hanyor was perhaps the most experienced and highly trained pilot. Flight 93's hijacker, Saeed Al Gandhi was a former Saudi fighter pilot. How could Hanyor be more experienced than him? On the morning of 9-11, Hani Hanyor and his four accomplices traveled to Dulles International Airport outside of Washington, D.C. They had spent the weeks beforehand at the Valencia Motel in Laurel, Maryland, 
six miles from the National Security Agency. All five will set off metal detectors and be subjected to additional screening, yet all of them proceed to board American Airlines Flight 77, which is described by the Washington Post as unusually light on passengers. Out of 188 seats, 64 would be filled. In fact, all four planes involved in 9-11 would be at approximately 30% capacity. The hijackers will board alongside Barbara Olson, the wife of Solicitor General Ted Olson, and a number of employees from Boeing, Raytheon, the Department of Defense, Lockheed Martin, American Airlines, the Navy, Army, and other government agencies. The pilots were Officer David Charlebois and Captain Charles Burlingame. Charles Frank Burlingame III, an aeronautical engineer and a graduate of both the Naval Academy and Top Gun Fighter Pilot School, flew F-4 fighter jets and developed anti-terrorism strategies at the Pentagon before retiring in 1989 to take a job at American Airlines. He would remain active in the reserves and anti-terrorism exercises until 1996. His Boeing 757 would be crashed into the very section of the Pentagon he used to work in. The hijackers would have only moments to subdue both Charlebois and Burlingame, remove them from the cockpit, and retain control of the airplane. Yet, the plane is hijacked without incident at 8.51 and makes an unauthorized turn to the south three minutes later. No mayday, no hijack code, no sign of struggle. Flight 77 will fly all the way back from the Kentucky-Ohio border, coasting for another 43 minutes against its flight path before crashing into the Pentagon without any military interception. Had Hani Hanjour wanted to inflict maximum damage, all he had to do was continue his trajectory and nose down into the roof of the Pentagon. Instead, he begins a complicated, 330 degree turn, dropping 7,000 feet and exposing himself for an additional three minutes while executing a maneuver described by experienced pilots as nearly impossible, requiring professional expertise. In essence, an amateur pilot considered a waste of resources by instructors who was unable to control a small Cessna in August 2001, executed this nearly impossible maneuver in a 757 with skilled precision a month later. Tom Lewis is working radar at Dulles Airport. One of my colleagues saw a target moving from the northwest to the southeast. And it was just a countdown, 10 miles west. And uh, she notified the supervisor. Nine miles west. But nobody knew that was a commercial flight at the time. Nobody knew that was American 77. Well, what did you think? It was a military flight of some kind? I thought it was a military flight. I thought that uh, Langley had scrambled some fighters. and It was almost a sense of relief. This must be a fighter. Maybe one of them got up there. He was really moving fast. He was eh? moving very fast, like, like a military aircraft might move at a low altitude. This must be one of our guys sent in, scrambled to patrol our capital. The 757 will descend over Columbia Pike, flying adjacent to the Sheridan Hotel, Virginia Department of Transportation, Navy Annex, and fly past the Sitco gas station before crossing Washington Boulevard. Five light poles are knocked out of the ground. One reportedly strikes a Washington, D.C. tank, driven by Lloyd England. Flight 77 manages to hit the only section that was reinforced to withstand a terrorist attack, including reinforced steel and blast-resistant Kevlar windows an inch and a half thick. The renovation, planning for which had begun in 1991, was only days away from completion. Had the plane struck anywhere else, the casualties and damage would have been far greater. An area that normally would have housed up to 5,000 occupants yielded 125 casualties. The Pentagon's outer wall had a hole approximately 20 feet in diameter on the first and second floor, and visible damage 90 feet across the first floor. I would say if it was 16 feet 
diameter, 20 feet tops. That's what was starting me so curious as I was trying to find something. There was no marks on the on the on the grass. It, something never hit the ground. It didn't hit the heliport. I mean, it was a precision or awfully lucky hit. I mean, I, I don't know how it didn't bounce. I, I don't know how it hit directly in the side of the building without touching the ground, going as fast as it obviously was going. Um, but I can't believe the thing is is more than a garage door. And again, the classic airplane crash has wreckage. I mean, they found the axles from the Ryder truck in Oklahoma City. I can't believe they can't find an engine. Opinions differ at this point. People that believe a 757 hit the Pentagon and people that don't. Those that believe a 757 did hit are fueled by the damage path 